America decides its political future in less than a month. And just this past week, Facebook decided to take down conspiracy theories pushed by the online movement known as QAnon. Wired Magazine Editor-in-Chief Nicholas Thompson has some background. It's one letter, but it spells out a bizarre conspiracy theory with President Trump at the center. My president walked out there, went in front of the church, and held the Holy Bible. Q, representing church. someone or something called QAnon. We will not cow it down to evil. We're Americans. What exactly is QAnon? QAnon is a bundle of different beliefs, but the one that often gets focused on the most is the idea that Donald Trump is fighting and winning a war against satanic, cannibalistic, child molesting top Democrats. Starting in 2017, a mysterious someone calling him or her or themselves Q began posting tangled clues on internet message boards. They're called Q drops full of false information and styled as if they come from a Washington insider. Whitney Phillips is an assistant professor at Syracuse University who studies disinformation. This idea that you have a group of Obama holdovers who are actively trying to undermine Trump at every turn. And sometimes that is explicitly referred to as the deep state. At the cross of the theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that. While President Trump has refused offers to distance himself from QAnon. Is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Good Biden evening, has another diagnosis. What would you say to President Trump for not rejecting that conspiracy? and the people who believe in it. I've been a big supporter of mental health. I'd recommend the people who believe it maybe should take advantage while it still exists in the Affordable Care Act. It's bizarre. I feel now very strongly that Q has become sort of a line in the sand that if you are against Q, then you are either actively or passively supporting human trafficking, and child trafficking. You might notice the red, white, and blue banner behind Mike Cargyle. He's the Republican nominee for Congress in a heavily Democratic district east of Los Angeles. I want to name some, some people and tell me whether you think or whether Q has said they are involved in this human trafficking. Hillary Clinton? Yes. Barack Obama? Yes. George Soros? Yes. Michelle Obama? This I don't know. Bill Gates? Yes. Nancy Pelosi? This I don't know. Huma Abedin? No, let me back up. I think yeah. I did hear something about Nancy and Uma. But here's the thing. The names you've named have all had allegations of doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. Where's the investigation? It turns out when you talk to a Q believer, every question just begets more questions. Like when I asked about some of the more outlandish Q beliefs regarding President Obama. How does one investigate whether Barack Obama worships Satan or drinks blood? Well, I would start by putting him in front of a panel of people and asking him, has anybody asked him, sir, have you engaged in these activities? None of this is new. None of it's creative. Essentially, all it's doing is playing on conspiracy tropes that have been around for decades, if not centuries. Joseph Yuzinski is an associate professor of political science at the University of Miami. He studies conspiracy theories. How many people in this country do you think believe in QAnon? So depending on how we ask these questions on surveys, we get between five and 10%. And in many ways, it's actually one of the least believed conspiracy theories that I poll on, which I think is a good thing. Q has been able to capitalize on a whole lot of beliefs that are already popular amongst Americans. So the idea that there's a deep state is almost a majority belief. Vaccines often poll around 25 to 30 percent of Americans thinking there's some sort of conspiracy there. So many of the component parts of QAnon on their own poll very well and are far more popular than QAnon. It used to be the case that you had to do a lot of legwork if you were questioning who really assassinated JFK or who controls global finance. But now, 
the online world leads you on. Facebook responded this week by banning QAnon accounts. When you are starting to go down the rabbit hole, as they say, you start clicking around and searching for information about QAnon or the deep state, what happens is that based on your previous clicks or the previous clicks of people who are deemed to be like you by recommendation algorithms, you start getting fed more and more confirming information, not just about the conspiracy theory you're looking into, but other conspiracy theories as well. Algorithms are feeding you the kinds of things, the kind of diet it thinks you want to eat. As a, a prospective congressman, I always want to get to the bottom of the issue. What is actually occurring? I stand with Q and the team. Mike Cargyle, we should point out, is not the only apparent Q supporter running for Congress. There are more than a dozen candidates, almost all Republicans. Many, after showing early signs of support, have tried to distance themselves from Q. That includes Marjorie Taylor Greene, running unopposed in a solidly Republican district in Georgia. She's almost certainly headed to Capitol Hill. Save America, stop socialism. What will you do if people are elected who believe in the QAnon theory? You gotta push back on them. Adam Kinzinger is a Republican congressman from Illinois and one of the few in his party to speak out against QAnon. Everybody has a right to elect whoever they want in their district. If somebody wants to send a QAnon believer out here, it's their right in a representative democracy, but it doesn't mean we have to accept it. This month, the House passed a resolution condemning QAnon. 17 Republicans voted against it. Congressman Kinzinger is worried about the effect that QAnon could have on the November 3rd election. So you think that people believing in QAnon could actually destabilize the United States government. Yeah, I mean, I think when a conspiracy like that spreads, it begins to destabilize how you view your own country. And over a period of time, as that spreads, whether you bought into it one day or you didn't, that will lead to, you know, maybe election night. You don't think the results are real. You think they're rigged. The problem is you don't know something's big and something's too big until it's too big. And it's important to step on this early. Well, we had him. We asked the congressman to indulge us and to put one QAnon theory to rest. So you're from Illinois. Can I just get you on the record that you don't think Barack Obama is a Satan-worshipping baby blood drinker? Well, let me think of it. No, I don't think he's a Satan-worshipping baby blood drinker. I disagreed with a lot of his policies, but I think he was a pretty good guy. With that out of the way, we turn back to conspiracy expert Joseph Yushinsky, who it turns out has some personal experience with Q. I tend to believe that every conspiracy theory has a better than 0% chance of being true, except for this one. And the reason why I know this is because Q has done drops about me, where he suggested that I'm part of a deep state plot to get him. I may not be able to prove to you or anyone else that I'm not a deep state member, but I know that I'm not. And I know that Q is full of baloney, and this is a delusion. 